Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So we're going to carry on with the Rev D RDX build and see if we can get through to completion today. So let's bring in for a close up look and see how we get on with this one. Right, so it's now turn as we need one of his little hex pins. And to the best I can tell, the RA one goes on the left. So once we've got that on, it does tell you to fit the wheel nut just to stop the disc dropping and letting the hex fall about. But then we've got the discs and these small screws to put in. And they are elongated holes. So if we get this tightened down pretty much all the way, and then just back them off slightly. Make sure your hex is all the way down. And then you've got to try and line your caliper up as best you can. So it's in the center. So it don't catch. Or else you're going to have your caliper catching on your disc. So when you're finished, it should look something like that. You want it so it's not catching. And then you just build the opposite side up exactly the same. So, once you've got them both assembled, you should have about a millimetre clearance either side in case there's a bit of play. But, let's see what we've got next. So, moving on, we've got our drive shafts. We need to get them in place in the output cups. Once you've got them in place, should then be able to clip your tie rod on. Then we've got this tiny little bar or hinge pin. So they're going to slide through. Once you've got that in place, you've got a tiny little crosshead screw for each side that just screws in. And just be careful not to over tighten these because you will strip the threads really, really easily. And these just go in one in front, one in back, and it just stops your hinge pin from coming out. And again, for the opposite side, just going to spin the drive shaft till it drops into place. Bit fiddly when I'm trying to get it on camera, but they're not too bad if you're just building the actual RC. So once you get that in place on the tie rod, and you want your tiny little pin. One little screw in the front of the arm. And again, tiny little screw in the rear. And that'll just keep us pinning. And then we got a suspension pretty much in place. There's a bit of play in that, but not, not the worst I've seen. So, let's carry on and uh, see what else we've got. Right, so, back to his little spacers again. So, we're basically going to put a spacer on and drop one of them in. Then we're going to have a spacer. And it tells you to screw this all the way in. Once that's screwed in, screw one of these arms down to it. So we've got two of these to build, so I'll get them assembled and then uh, see what else we've got. Right, so that's two of these assembled. You tighten them all the way down and a spacer on each one of them. So let's see what else we've got. So we've got some of everybody's favourite things in the world to assemble. These horrible little uh, E-clips, C-clips or whatever clips, clips that fly off and go missing. But basically, you put one on, you drop that on the top, and then this second one is 
usually the one that goes flying. But that's how you've got to do. That's how they go together. So I'll get the next one assembled and we'll carry on. Right, so we're going to be assembling these arms. So it looks like we get this and it goes through. And then we have the lovely task of trying to get a one mil spacer down the back of that arm and to hold in place while we get a pin through. Which is sometimes easier said than done, but they're not too bad at all. I must admit, even the little C-clip E-clips are nice to use on this car. Just be really careful now when you're putting these little grub screws in. It's very, very easy to strip the threads on them. So just finger tight, get it nipped up, and that'll do. So then we've got to try and get the other one in. So, I mean, I've got to hand it to them. This is the first one of the uh, of this brand's RCs that I've built. And I must admit, the instructions are definitely up there with some of the best instructions I've come across. And even bits that are awkward on other RCs just don't seem awkward to fit on these. So, now we've got that assembled. Let's see what else we've got. So, moving on again, we're going to need a 1 mil hex drive, a 1.5 mil hex driver again. And we're just going to tighten these down. And again, it says just tighten them down until they stop turning. So, just do them finger tight. You can feel as soon as there's some resistance. Again, one mil plastic shim. And again, this would be one place where you could just bling it up a bit with some cheap shims. And then all we need to do is just spin this bit down. And you just want to snug it up to the one mil washer. And just leave it facing upwards and then get the other one assembled and we'll carry on so we got these all assembled next we're going to need two of his inch pins and we've got to get one of these one mil shims in front of the hinge pin So your one mil shim is going towards the front and there's not a lot of movement in that which I'm quite impressed with. So next we've got a tiny little grub screw and again just go really really gentle with these. As soon as you feel the resistance if you try and push the pin it won't move you really don't need to tighten these down much. And then for the opposite side, again, we use one mil shim first. And we can get that in place. And then there's a little tiny grub screw. And I'm not sure if it really shows through on camera how much I'm enjoying building this, but yeah, I uh, to be honest, I, I can't say I'm impressed enough with this. It's it's fantastic. All the bits where you could um, could improve or yeah, there are. We could have adjustable turnbuckles, but then it'd take even longer to build. Won't be as enjoyable. 
Um, ultimately, though, it's a drift car. And if the geometry that this gives you is right for drifting, it's right. Why would you ever alter them? You could argue that you could have stronger output cups, but ultimately, with a drift car, you're just looking for less resistance because you're not putting an awful lot of load on the uh, output cups. And it does feel amazingly smooth. Yeah, it's a plastic chassis, but my God, it's a stiff chassis. So, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this. But let's carry on, see what else we've got. So, here we go. This is uh, building us hubs up. So, we get one and the inner hole. We want one of these weird contraptions in. And it looks like a 2 mil hex will drive them in. Then you want one of your shorter threaded studs in the top. Then if we switch to the bottom, shorter threaded stud in the bottom. Then we're going to want a longer threaded stud with a 1mm shim and this comes out of the bottom of the hub again somewhere else you could put a 1mm bling shim on it and don't over tighten these things so that's one assembled then we need another that's an exact mirror image so I'll get this built up and then we can carry on so next we're going to need a little bearing oil And we're going to need two of us pins. And then for these, we just drop a bearing in from the back and a bearing from the front. Once we've got them in, you want one of your pins coming through from the back. Let's see what else we've got. Right, so moving on to assembling as hubs finally. So we're going to need to get the pin in. And this is going to be a little bit interesting. So for this one, it looks like the FA part should fit. Then it's telling you to wind one of the nuts on. Don't really see point tightening it all the way down because these are really tight. So it's not like they're going to fall off. I know some of the RCs, the hexes do just drop clean off, but it doesn't feel like it on this. So then again, we're going to have to line the discs up so you've got a little bit of play either side. And I don't really think these would be too challenging to adjust once the RC is built so if they were slightly out of line I don't think it would cause you too much of a headache but you just want about a mil either side so it can spin without catching so we just need to build this one up exactly the same so I'll get this put together and then see what else we've got so there we have it both assembled plenty of clearance so let's see what else we've got so from what I can tell, these looked a bit right way round. So we want one clipped on at bottom. Let's see if we can get the top one on. Yep. And then we need a steering. That's not too bad. There we got one in the bottom, one in top, and one for a steering. And the geometry doesn't look too bad. You can adjust these, you just pop them off, spin them out. So they are all adjustable, and you can shim them. So you know you've got exactly the same on either side. But until we get a suspension on, it's 
going to be hard to tell how it's sat. But I am just building it straight out of kit, as it says. So next, we're going to be fitting the motor. Nah, not entirely sure where he's going to end up keeping all this lined up. So let's just have a look at rough positioning. And then he can always change it to be exactly where he wants it. So this one looks like he's going to be running a Team Powers 10.5 turn. Uh, it is a brushless. And it's going to be running the XR10 stock ESC. Now the stock pinion that we get with this is a 48 pitch and it's 20 tooth I believe. Does look like the motor shaft's long enough on this one. So let's find the uh, flat spot. So that looks like it's out far enough. Now it's always worth spinning the motor all the way around because you do, like that, end up finding a tight spot. And I just like to set these so there's a tiny, tiny bit of play all the way around. And then you can line your pinion up perfect. And that way they shouldn't run hot. So we do get some sticky foam in the actual kit, so I'm just going to mount the ESC down. It looks like this foam is absolute perfect width for this ESC. So if we go there, and then you can just put a tie wrap on stuff. Looks like the battery cable should just about be long enough. But I'm sure if needs be, he can lengthen them. It looks like that's going to reach wherever receiver's going. Now, he hasn't sent me a fan, so I'm not sure if he's going to fit a motor fan. But it does have the brackets and everything. So you can mount a fan to this. So, it looks like we do get the actual fan mount. And it does look like you can put it in either position. So, let's just screw this on. And then it's not going to get lost. I mean, bearing in mind I've had uh, high-end x-ray kits that didn't used to come with fan mount. It was an optional extra. Yeah, a... 240 pound drift RC kit comes with fan man it's pretty cool right let's see what else we've got all right so first off we need four of the shock shafts building up so we're gonna get one of the little clips And once you've got that in place, you want the actual damper itself, and then another clip on the top. And all four of these are going to be built exactly the same. And unlike Team Associated, this company actually sends three extra little eclipse art with the kit to what I can tell so far so we just need to build the other three up and uh, we can carry on so moving on we're gonna have to assemble the actual shocks themselves now so we're gonna start off with the shock body we're gonna get some o-ring grease Then once we've got his little o-ring in, you want the larger side to the o-ring. The smaller side goes through the cap. Before you tighten that all the way up, carefully slide your shock through it. And then we can tighten these down. They'll tighten down pretty snug. 
and we just need to do that for all four so we get the other three done all right once we've got them assembled it's turners we're going to need as shock pliers and we've just got to screw the little ends on not the easiest thing to do when your hands are absolutely caked in uh, o-ring oil but it is doable So if you just scrum them down to where the thread stop, and that'll be enough. So I'll get the other three assembled. So once you've got the shocks assembled, we can drop them all into the stand. And then we just need to fill the oil up. So this is where it usually gets all over. But it's quite thin oil this, so shouldn't really take long to get the uh, air bubbles out. So we've just got to fill these up. Once you've got them filled, one at a time, just move these shocks through the motion of travel. Should be enough to get any air out of them. And then I'm just going to leave these to sit for a good while. And it'll just let any air bubbles come to the top. And then we'll carry on. Right, so, once we've got all the oil settled in these we can get each one out we've got the little bladder to put on and I find if you slide it on from side it usually helps not get air bubbles trapped then you gotta pop one of the tops in we're gonna get it in place and if you start by spinning it backwards you usually get a bit of a better chance of not cross threading them and we just need to tighten these down just wipe off the excess oil and we should have a nice working shock now depending on how you want to set these you can if you back these off you can slowly push the shock up and then tighten it and that should should give you quite a nice shock action and it doesn't sound like there's any air trapped inside that so I'll just do the same for the other three right so that's all four shocks assembled so they should all be working really nice. So now we can move on to getting the springs on them. So I'll get all them ready. Right, first thing we're going to do is get the collars screwed onto them all. So the collars you want facing down. So you get the collar in place with the little ridge at the bottom. Then you want the shocks. So for the rear, we've got the slightly closer coils up net top and then these go on with the ridges at the top so your spring sits in it and then for the front ones again we're going to get the collars on and this is not a bad job at all I must admit as shocks go these really aren't bad to build and they do actually feel quite nice and the front shocks have the coil towards the bottom so again if you just pull the end up slide that in place and then pop it back down on end and it should hold so I get the other two built up and then carry on so we got all four assembled front ones apparently have the coil towards the bottom rear ones coil towards the top so if we quickly bring us RC back in. So we should be able to just clip these on. So that's the top bit in place. The bottom in place. 
these have got to go down in history as one of the easiest shocks that I've ever fitted. So top in place, bottom. So that's as rear shocks. As front ones, can't see these being any more difficult. So that's one in place. Two in place. And while we're on it, I'm going to stick the ESC in there. And uh, sorry, the receiver. So I'll just get that. So we have a receiver and a gyro to fit. So I think receiver wise, probably best off there. And then let's get the sticky back off as gyro. So if we get that there. Which way around is this receiver? It looks like that should sit in that way. And then just a little bit of tidying left for him to do when he decides if he wants to shorten wires or anything else. And I think lastly we should have our body post to pop on so let's have a look what we've got right so first off we've got to mount these bits and these both go on with 10 mil screws and they're just the domed headed ones so i'll get them screwed in and then we can carry on so once we've got that mounted we then need to mount this to the front of the actual RC so it does locate onto logs and then you want 8mm screws and we just need to put four of these in so I'll get them on right once we've got all them in place we can then mount this bit and again we're just going to use four of the 8mm screws one two three and four and get them mounted down so once we've got them on then you can mount these in whatever position suits for the body shell you've got and it's turn us just to screw these in from the bottom with eight mil screws so you just push them into place if you flip the RC over you can just screw these in with the eight mil screws provided so I'll get them screwed down so once we've got that done, we've just got wheels and the rear body mounts to do. So let's get on with rear and get that one finished. So for this, there's multiple options, but it's turn as basically we mount these and then you just use the eight mil screws again, straight through to mount them. And you do have little ridges on the side that faces the shock tower. So you can tell when they're lined up correctly. And we just need to get them screwed in. Two screws on each side. So I'll get that done. And finally for body mounts. You've just got these to go on. And to screw these on. Use two of the 10mm screws that are left. Now you can fit these either way around. To suit whatever body you're putting on. Uh, I'll just get these tightened up. So we also have an optional rear diffuser. And that can go on with just a few extra screws. And they are the, I believe these are the 8mm. And they're just the countersunk screws. It just adds a bit of uh, scale appearance to it I suppose. And I must admit this has definitely been one of the more enjoyable builds that I've done. But it's quite a nice looking thing. There's definitely no shortage of spares. So we have one screw that I believe was out of the original servo. We've got 
all these screws we've got three of the clips we've got two more screws we've got a spare one of them a spare grub screw and quite a few shims so if you did want to get any of the uh, sort of free play out of it there's a good number of shims available what we got two four so we got six shims left I think all that's left to do now is put the wheels on it so I'll quickly get them dropped on so there we have it wheels fitted just to give you some idea of what the actual suspension is like as stock feels quite soft at front but then we've got no preload on them at all the wheels are quite stanced in at that but that is the stock build settings for it it is adjustable you could add shims if you wanted or you can just pop these off and wind them out and set your uh, set your camber and everything exactly how you want the steering links seems to go full lock to lock doesn't hit the top of the servo which is one of the things I worried about bearings seem quite nice we got these wheels we got uh, come with red wheel nuts so I fitted them but yeah all in all quite an enjoyable build I have set this up for the short packs mounted sideways um, it does come with all the required screws and fitments to mount short packs lengthways or you can have long packs lengthways long packs widthways um, and it's also got the parts to either have shallow batteries or the deeper thicker cells so yeah the I believe it's pronounced Rev D RDX temp scale drift chassis fair I think you're doing really good for a learner driver you know to say you've not had much experience with RC So that is the build of the Rev D um, RDX drift car and I must admit it feels a damn sight more solid than I expected it to. I really like the look of it, the suspension feels really smooth, the steering has almost no slop in it. The only bit of slop that I'm finding is in these rear arms but we have got a bunch of shims left so... I could shim them and shim them out. You could get rid of any slop at all, but I don't think it's really going to come into it with this. Quite impressed at just how many options there is for a battery layout on this thing. And generally how solid it is. The instructions were fantastic. Only part where I was slightly left thinking what's going where is when you're building the, the bottom bit of the suspension. Um, the inner part but it was just the way I was looking at the instructions um, other than that no issues at all shocks feel really nice and 
I would suggest that this is probably a really good way of getting into RC without being crazy expensive. You don't need to run a full brushless motor system in it if you don't want. You could run a brushed um, and you could run a pretty cheap ESC and radio. You're not generally going to damage a drift car as much as you are any others because you're not going that fast when you crash. And you don't need a lot of space to use one. But it's um, definitely going to be one way you're going to want to put a separate, separate gyro in or a gyro receiver to get the best out of a rear wheel drive drift. Um, don't really think there's anything to watch out for on the actual build. All seem to go pretty, uh, pretty smooth. Do like this uh, battery system to get your battery in that from either side. Do like that idea. But there you have it. Um, if I can find where it's from, I'll leave a link in the description below. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. Hopefully you like this. Bit of a different thing other than the Fly Sky videos. But don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share to friends and family. And uh, catch you guys again in the next one.